than that was. So Mississippi State uh, kind of curb stomped Ole Miss on Friday night, eight to nothing. Uh, Cal Steven was phenomenal. Dakota Jordan hits another bomb. Uh, Ole Miss is like nothing offensively. And then you have the wild game on Saturday night that Ole Miss wins in 12 innings. And then on Sunday, it's Ole Miss that does the curb stomping with a run rule walk-off victory. What a crazy weekend. Oh, it really was. And it's kind of a microcosm just to kind of the season, frankly, that Ole Miss has had. It's just been very up and down. And frankly, if you go back to the to the middle game of that series, it looks like Mississippi State you know, is going to win that game a couple of times in the top of the inning. Then Ole Miss kind of comes back, eventually gets the walk off. But, you know, the fact that they, that, that Ole Miss was able to win that Saturday or the middle game and then come back and finish so dominant in the last game. And I say dominant because they finished off with a six, six run frame late in the game. They kind of capped things off there, but you know, they had what uh, six guys in the lineup, seven guys in the lineup in multi hit games on in, in the series finale. So, that really told me a lot about this team to score 24 runs the last two games of the series, especially, like you said, in the opener, it's you're, you're thinking, oh, boy, Mississippi State, they're just going to run away with this thing this weekend. So, uh, I mean, the good news is they got a series win. The bad news is SEC play continues. So, uh, for both of these teams, it's not going to get any easier. All right, so, so Old Miss is in kind of a weird spot right now. Mm-hmm. From an RPI standpoint, they're in great shape. They're, they're sitting at 29, I think, today. Um, They've got a bunch of RPI opportunities in front of them, starting with Georgia this weekend, who's at 11. But right now they don't have the wins to match the RPI. Is this one of those years where there is a target number of wins that Ole Miss has to get to? Is that number 13? Or is that enough? Yeah, I think it's going to have to be 13. I mean, A, you're going to have to make the SD tournament. Uh, B... I think you're going to have to get to 13 wins. Um, you know, I think the, the pathway to getting the tournament without 13 wins is very difficult. Uh, you know, unless you just have something in your resume that the committee looks at and goes, wow, like we've got to put these guys in. So I, I look at it like this. So looking at Ole Miss's remaining schedule at Georgia this week, going to be difficult. You know, Georgia plays well at home. You get Alabama at home at Auburn. Auburn can really hit. They can't pitch a lot, but they can really hit. If you have A&M, and then you're going on the road to face what will at that point be an extremely desperate LSU team. Uh, I mean, they've got a very tough road, but, I mean, there's a pathway. It's just, I just think RPI-wise, they remind me a lot. I'm trying to remember the year. It might have been 18 or 17. North Carolina had an RPI of, like, 27, but they had a similar problem. Their conference record wasn't very good. They were left out of the field. With that said, the committee – moves the goalposts every single year when it comes to which teams they let in the tournament. So at the end of the day, I mean, Ole Miss controls its own destiny because they have the RPI. It's just can they, you know, can they establish consistency the rest of the way is my question. And I'm still be, I'm still to be determined on that. I'm not sure they can. Uh, will LSU be desperate or dead by the last weekend of the regular season? Uh, they could be dead. I mean, here's the thing. I, I've mapped out the rest of LSU season, and I'm at 11 wins right now in conference. Um, that means they're going to have to do a couple of things. They're going to have to sweep someone like Auburn or someone like Ole Miss, or they're going to ha- and they're going to have to win the series from A and M, or they're going to have to make it up somewhere else. Like they're going to have to go on the road and sweep Missouri. And Missouri is actually pretty difficult to beat at home in SEC play. So they're going to have to make something up with a sweep somewhere. Right now, it's looking pretty bleak. Hmm. What about on the Mississippi State side of things? Um, mm-hmm. They seem to have figured out Friday night. Cal Stevens has been really good for the last month. Um, Drangelo Sane just seems to be dealing with some issues. I mean, when, when he's healthy, he's pitched really well. But, you know, he leaves after three innings this yeah. week, some tightness in his back. He's mostly throwing right-handed this year because of maybe some left-hand fo- arm fatigue, whatever's going on there. Um and then, like, there are a couple of pieces in the bullpen that are really good, and there are three or four pieces in the lineup that, like, scare you to death. But after those three or four pieces, like, there's nothing in the lineup that scares you. No, you're, you're right. I mean, it, what's, what's frustrating if you're Mississippi State is you feel like you kind of had that series and you let things slip away a little bit. Um, you, you know, you also have, you know, Nate Down back on the shelf. And so – 
Yeah, I mean, the, the 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 feeling on this team has changed just a hair. I do want to see how they play this weekend against Auburn at home. Uh, but there's no doubt. I mean, St. Joe and, and, and obviously Dome can't come back. I mean, granted, they've won a lot of games without him. But, uh, yeah. you know, I, I don't think this is a pitching staff that can, that can really handle a lot of in, uh, injuries. And I also do agree with you offensively with this team that it, it's very kind of – you know, top top six loaded. Like the bottom, very bottom of the lineup to me doesn't really scare doesn't scare me uh, a lot. So uh, I'll be interested to see how they respond this weekend. Frankly, I mean, I, I still like this team. I still like the fact they're you know we're an out or two away from winning the series over the weekend. But the way that they played in that series finale, just their lack of urgency, uh, kind of leaves me thinking they they need to prove something this weekend at AU. And, and, Kendall, Mississippi State's the opposite of Ole Miss, right? They've got more wins, but they've got a little bit of an RPI problem in that they are hovering yeah. around 50, I think 48, 49 right now. But playing uh, Alcorn State tonight, who's at 302, I mean, they're going to fall into the mid-50s, win or lose. Yeah, they will. I mean, the good thing for them is if you look at the remaining schedule, they still have series against RPS 17, 18, 6, uh, and then they go, they have Missouri at home, and they still yeah. have another game with Ole Miss. And so the RPI will take, care of, will take care of itself. They just need to win some games. Yeah, that uh, it makes a lot of sense. Um, I feel like as it pertains to Southern Miss, if you're looking at the scores and you're looking at this week and you're going, wait, what? They got yeah, run exactly. ruled on That's exactly Friday? what I did when I saw the two scores and the losses. Yeah. And they were down 6-1 to one on Sunday and then came back and ended up winning pretty comfortably. Yeah. Um, how damaging was this weekend for Southern Miss? It definitely was. I mean, we, we will still have them in the field tomorrow. Spoiler alert. Okay. Uh, but I think this is a team that, you know, net, their margin for error is, is much less than it was. I mean, to get run rule twice over the weekend, now have an RPI of 48. Um, they're no longer a team that you consider like ultra safe to make the tournament. They're going to have to finish pretty strong to continue to, you know, to be on track to get to the field. So, uh, you know, I, again, at, at this time of year, I kind of look at the remaining schedules, look at the remaining schedule, like at ULM at Louisiana, they still have to play coastal. Uh, they still have to play Texas state at home, which Texas state has been on a great year, but it's still a dangerous club. But to still have Louisiana and coastal on the schedule, the bad news is they still have Louisiana and, and the Coastal on the schedule. The good news is they still have Louisiana and Coastal yeah. on the schedule. So, like, they still have a lot of room they can move up the ranks in terms of the RPI, and there's no doubt. This is a good team. Uh, they just kind of ran into that bus fall against Georgia State over the weekend. It just happens sometimes. Brother, Kentucky is 14-1 and one in the SEC. Oof. Now, price of poker goes up starting this weekend. They kind of become yeah. the hunted. Uh, number four, Tennessee, but it's at home. They go to South Carolina, doing the, the remaining schedule thing for you. They get Arkansas at home. They got to go to Florida. They get Vanderbilt at home. So their three most difficult opponents are at home, but this is not an easy finishing stretch of 15 games. Does it matter, though? How good are they? Well, here's the thing about Kentucky. They put themselves in a position to where they can literally, like, I mean, they can throw out, like, two series the rest, the rest of the year, which you only have, what, four remaining? Four or five remaining? I think it's four. Five, yeah, five remaining. remaining five weeks remaining. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, you can literally just have a mulligan in two weekends, and they're still easily a top 16 seed because of the conference record. So, I mean, to, for Kentucky of all teams and all programs to be in that position is remarkable in itself. But, you know, let, let's Kendall, really get, they, you know, Kendall, they can go six and here, nine right? in their final 15 games and win 20 games in the SEC. Yeah. Like, they are, they are, I mean, I would never just come out and say this because, you know, if it doesn't happen, then people are, well, you, you know, you're a so called <laughs> expert. But, I mean, they are pretty much close to being a lock as a top 16 already. With um, 20 games left in the regular season. Yeah. Well, it, here's the thing that I really like about Kentucky is 30 they've seconds. been better than I thought on the mound. And guess what? They're not known for their home run hitting, but if you look at their offense in conference play, they are right behind a and and Tennessee in the pecking order in home runs. Uh, Ryan Nicholson, that offense, has done a tremendous job uh, from a power standpoint in conference play. Yeah.